Awesome. Thank you very much, Diane. Thanks for uh, letting Resco to have a session and thank you for letting us sponsor this great event. Welcome everyone. It's amazing. I've been uh, connected uh, the whole morning and except for a few moments when I had to step out, I, I was watching all the other sessions. It's amazing community. It's great to see so many people connecting on Saturday, uh, taking their day off to uh, to spend with, uh, uh, with other people here. Uh, so this session is going to focus on field service, uh, but from a little different perspective, we're going to talk and focus on a lot of uh, uh, mobility stuff. So different mobile applications. I've seen the chat and some questions here asking about uh, what is the role of the new Power App based application for field service? What is the role of the Resco based one? What should the existing customers do? What are some of the differences between the two or three uh, different solutions? So all of those questions I'll try to cover at uh, today's session. And just so you know who I am, uh, I'm uh, a manager and evangelist at Resco.net. If you would like to connect with me, I'd be really happy to do so. Feel free to shoot me an email. My email address is super simple. If you have questions, feedback, ideas, maybe some thoughts about mobility you would like to share, I'd be more than happy to hear from you. Or if you're a, uh, if you're a big LinkedIn fan, uh, I'm there as well. Uh, you can find me uh, by looking for Ivan Steno right there. Thank you also to the sponsors. Uh, my company, Resco, is one of the sponsors. Thank you for the opportunity, uh, Diane and Tricia. Uh, thank you to MSC RM Edmonds, uh, our my friends in from Austria, uh, where they're or they, where they're based. Uh, thank you for sponsoring the, this event and RSM. Thank you as well. So agenda, I know we have uh, 50 minutes uh, to cover all the topics and all the thoughts here. Uh, so first I'll explain a little bit why I think uh, this topic is kind of relevant for Resco and myself to talk about. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about Microsoft and Resco, about the relationship, explain how it works, what we agreed on, and some of the changes that are happening and that are planned for the future. Uh, then talk a little bit more general why mobility is so crucial and so important uh, in the field service scenarios, where, where, why there's no customer without uh, a mobile workforce where, when it comes to field service then uh, portray the current mobile options, uh, uh, what customers uh, have, uh, what, what, what those look like when they're considering mobility. I'll explain Field Service 2.0, a new solution or new initiative that we put together uh, for customers who are, are seeking or looking for more advanced mobile capabilities. And then hopefully if everything works uh, works well, I prepared a demo. I'd love to show you some cool functionality of uh, running the mobile applications, not only on smartphones, but also smartwatches. So hopefully everything will work well and I'll be able to show you, uh, show you that uh, as well. And then of course, some room for your questions. Uh, so uh, let's kick it off. A few things first uh, about Resco and why I believe that we uh, we are kind of relevant to talk about mobility as a company uh, and myself as part of uh, Resco team. Uh, so we've been in business for over 20 years uh, as a company. It's pretty long time actually. The company was founded in 1999 and since the very beginning we were big, big believers in mobility, mobile technologies, mobile applications, mobile developer tools. If there's anyone here today who remembers Palm Pilots, uh, give me a shout out in uh, in the chat. Those were kind of the devices uh, that we first supported and were targeting with Resco applications when we started the business. That eventually evolved. We were supporting uh, uh, the first versions of uh, Windows Mobile, Pocket PCs, uh, those ruggedized devices used in the enterprise uh, uh, world, and then eventually, of course, the iPhones, iPads, Android devices, Windows Mobile for uh, Windows phones actually for a brief period of, of time, and now we're trying to uh, support all of the devices. We have a pretty large footprint. We work with more than 2,500 customers, all B two B. So it's a large pool of companies from all different parts of the world uh, using Resco technologies, 
by more than 200,000 licensed users. So we think we, we, we've seen a lot of different implementations, a lot of different requirements, a lot of different challenges that these companies and the individual users face in real life situations. Hence, I'm going to talk about mobility today. For those of you who follow field service for quite some time, I'm sure this is no news, uh, but if we have some new faces here or you don't, don't know much history uh, uh, about why Resco and Microsoft work together, it actually all started about 11 years ago when Resco partnered with a company called Field One Systems. They're not around anymore. They were acquired by Microsoft several years ago, but Field One Systems was a company who believed in the power of Microsoft Dynamics, CRM back then, and they also believed that the part of a successful product or solution for field service needs to be a very powerful and capable mobile technology. So back then, 11 years ago, we partnered with Field One Systems. We supported Field One with our mobile, mobile technology, mobile platform uh, that uh, Field One Systems team took over and created their uh, customized, tailor-made version of mobile applications wrapped around the field service scenarios and use cases and functionality. Fast forward a few years uh, from there, uh, Microsoft decided to acquire Field One Systems as a company, as a solution with their user base and customer base. And uh, the rest is history. Microsoft built on top of that solution, and we now know it as Microsoft Dynamics 365 for field service. Resco remained in the picture. Uh, a few years ago, we actually uh, signed an agreement directly with Microsoft to keep supporting the field service solution with our technology. So that's kind of uh, the, the short window into history and why Resco is such a big part of uh, field service. If you ask the question, okay, what does that mean that Resco supports Microsoft field service, that we supply uh, the mobility and uh, the mobile uh, technology with Resco technology? Here's a quick overview. So what Microsoft gets from us are actually three pieces. First, it's a field service mobile application. It's a native application uh, that works on all major platforms iOS, Android, and Windows devices as well. It's, uh, it's uh, wide labeled, so Microsoft put their own logo, their own splash screens uh, into the application, pre-configured it in, in certain way, and published it on all of the app stores under the Microsoft uh, Corporation uh, uh, brand or as, as a publisher. As part of it, there's a field service template Think of that, that as a lot of pre-configured functionality specifically to mirror uh, the field service functionality on the server side that all of the field service customers use as their default configuration of the application. And the last piece is a configurator, so a tool that allows to further tweak, change, customize, configure, uh, or edit the application so it mirrors the actual use cases, scenarios, workflows, and processes that the users go through on a daily basis. But in reality, it's pretty much just a copy of, of uh, what our customers have at their disposal and have had that for years and years and years and use uh, Resco technology the same way. So the application in, in terms of field service, it's field service mobile, in Resco terms, it's Resco Mobile CRM, also available on all of the platforms. The field service template that Microsoft put together in Resco's world, it's pretty much just another application project. So a specific configuration uh, and uh, a mirror of the or a subset of functionality from the server side. On average, when I talk to customers uh, that use Resco, Companies usually have two to three different application projects because they try to target two to three on, in, on average different uh, user roles uh, and user scenarios. And the service field service configurator uh, that you might have seen or maybe even used before, it's called Woodford, not the bourbon from Kentucky. It's actually the tool uh, that is fully integrated with Microsoft Dynamics 365 as a solution file and can be used to further uh, uh, change the application. 
So that's what part of the picture. And earlier this year, as part of wave one in May 2020, there came a first significant change in what customers are offered and will uh, have at their disposal as a next option when trying to mobilize their field service users. Microsoft introduced the first party application Dynamics for Dynamics 365 field service based on Power Apps. Right now, Microsoft still re actually recommends to use the original one, the RESCO based, or sometimes uh, Ben Volmer uh, often refers to it as a Xamarin, Xamarin based application, but that's the RESCO based application. That's the recommended one. With the Wave 2, there have been some improvements uh, and uh, further advancements and tweaks of the Power App based application. But until it uh, reaches the parity with the Xamarin based uh, application, uh, will, uh, uh, all the customers will have a chance to choose between uh, these two. So hopefully this, uh, this helped you to get a little better idea about uh, the history, what the options are, what changed. Let's now talk a little bit about more general challenges that mobility tries to solve and helps to solve to companies that have a lot of people uh, out in the field. The first one, and probably a very uh, cost-related uh, uh, challenge is to get the results on the first visits. We know from talking to companies that once they send their field service technicians, their users, their mobile users out into the field to visit a customer, uh, to, uh, uh, provide a cert to provide certain service, fix something, repair something, inspect something, etc., it costs a company a lot of money. Therefore, making sure that they do it on the first try is very, very important. We've had tremendous experience with companies who can operate in the most challenging environments you can you can ever imagine uh, uh, actually on, in the globe. And we understand how important it is to get everything right at the first attempt. The picture you actually see on this slide, uh, that's, a, that's a photo that my colleagues took last year when they were part of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees mission in Cameroon where they visited some of the refugee camps that uh, the UN runs there uh, to identify uh, the, uh, the refugees who, flee, flew, uh, who, who were fleeing from the surrounding countries. Uh, and they were, they were using the applications built on RESCO to go through the process. We've seen tremendous improvements, what usually took up to 15, 16 minutes with the RESCO based application, the whole process, they, they were able to cut it to just four minutes, which, uh, which is, was a tremendous, uh, tremendous uh, performance and efficiency booster for the UN. And now they use the application in more than 30 countries uh, around the world because they understand that people are uh, in tough conditions and getting through the identification uh, process is very important for them. Another challenge that we hear from companies is brain drain. A lot of their users, a lot of their employees uh, have been servicing uh, some of the equipment or doing their job for years and years and years. I uh, had a chance to spend a day with, uh, uh, with an elevator technician last year uh, in Florida and that man was was amazing. His name was Brian and he knew everything by heart. He was repairing and inspecting elevators for 20 years. He didn't need any uh, knowledge base articles, any manuals, any guides, uh, anything like that. He kept all the information in his head based on the, the year long, the decades long uh, experience he had. But for a lot of companies, this is a challenge because a lot of that knowledge those skills, that expertise is hidden in these people's brains. And uh, to try to uh, get to it is not always easy. Uh, we believe that a mobile solution can really provide this extra knowledge, extra expertise and bring it to users through well-designed mobile applications and processes uh, that that can guide the new users, new employees through some of the toughest uh, and most complex 
processes that they have to do. So we believe that the application that they use should uh, have the option to create create step by step workflows, processes and guides, sometimes equipped with uh, with some visual aids uh, and maybe some additional uh, additional access to uh, to manuals, etc., to help them uh, do the job. Another one, and this is still surprising to me. I was actually talking to one customer two weeks ago. Uh, despite they're using Dynamics, they use it on their laptops, but they never upload anything into their Dynamics systems while they're out in the field. They come home and they usually spend another hour updating all the collected information, all the data into Dynamics uh, from either their offices or their or their homes. Here, mobility is a great example how this can be uh, improved. If you're using the right tool for the right situation in the right time, you can actually save hours of work every day by doing it right on spot. The option to connect to your back office teams if you need extra help, maybe some hand holding, maybe you're going through a very tough uh, process, uh, very tough repair, complex repair. So the ability to connect with back office teams uh, is crucial uh, to get some help. And because the users are naturally mobile, they spend most of their time out in the offices, uh, give them a helping hand when they need to travel, uh, move from one uh, location to the other, uh, can bring a lot of benefits, uh, but not, not only for them, but also for the back office teams uh, so a, a, an option to see where your users are, some geofencing capabilities come handy, uh, also some understanding how to move from, uh, how to uh, better align your territories and how to better manage your users can bring a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, improvements and benefits. So some of the challenges uh, that we see customers are, are solving with mobile solutions. And now, uh, as promised, let's have a deeper look at some of the mobile options. Before I get there, some three key areas that I'm hearing uh, recently from, from, from customers who use field service solutions and they believe are really important for them when deciding uh, for the right tool. The first one is offline. Uh, and uh, with the wave, wave 2, Microsoft is making the offline uh, a default functionality in the Power App based field service application. Don't forget, though, that uh, it's a very different approach to the Xamarin or the RESCO based application. For us, offline is a philosophy. So we put everything into the technology that we develop uh working offline in default and built into the the technology so for us it's more about turning off some of the offline capabilities rather than adding offline uh, as a new feature uh, and enabling it uh, for for some of the uh the use cases through the offline profile profile also uh given our history uh the offline we improved it tremendously over the years. With every project, with every very challenging project, we redesigned, improved, uh, uh, and uh, restructured how the offline capabilities and the offline engine works. And uh, if I just go back quickly to that UN uh, example, uh, typically users not only work in areas where there's no connectivity, but very often those, uh, uh, those refugee camps are set up in areas where there's no electricity and they need to work in complete offline mode, not for hours, but sometimes for days or up to two weeks and they're able to do the job. So really uh, offline is not only feature, it's an experience, it's an experience for the user uh, where the application behaves uh, in a different way. It's swift, it's smooth, no need to wait for the forms and new screens to refresh or load the data. Everything can work in a nice, uh, nice way for the user. The next area is synchronization filters. Uh, no limitations in RESCO, uh, super granularity. Uh, there are some, some synchronization filters limitations when it comes to the offline profiles at, as part of the uh, Power App application. What we're actually doing as a team at RESCO, we're putting together some, uh, some comparisons so that we can help the companies to choose the right solution 
uh, uh, for them when they know they'll have to uh, make a nice subset of, of their records uh, to make sure that uh, the application uh, the application performance uh, is good. The third area is inspections. Uh, again, it's a it's a there's a difference between uh, between the approaches. Uh, the Microsoft in, uh, released inspections. Uh, we see it more as a feature for the field service. It can be embedded into the field service application, uh, but you need to be a field service uh, licensed user and you need to use the field service app. We also uh, have had inspections as a product released, I think, two or three years ago. Uh, but in our case, it can be either used as a standalone solution. We even have uh, our own inspections application available on the app stores, or it can be fully embedded into the existing uh, field uh, RESCO uh, application. So there's a lot of flexibility in both use cases and licensing as well. So. Considering these criteria, let's have a look at the current mobile options. So on one hand, we have the Dynamics 365 field service mobile, the RESCO slash Xamarin based application. Microsoft is pretty open that they will be uh, sunsetting support for this solution in, uh, in the foreseeable future. On the other hand, we have the field service uh, uh, Dynamics 365 in parentheses mobile application. That's the Power App based application. I think it's fair to say, uh, and I, it's not just my opinion. It's based on dozens of uh, of uh, calls and web meetings I've had in the last two three months with a lot of customers that they don't see this as being on par yet. But Microsoft is promising that it will be improved over the time. In both cases, I don't think this is a great news for the actual customers because on the left hand side, you have a solution that has a lot of functionality, have seen probably some of the toughest implementations in the various uh, uh, regions of the world, but the support for uh, this one is actually uh, being sunset. And then on the other hand, you have a solution that promises to bring a lot of functionality and feature uh, improvements, uh, but over a certain period of time. So Reza, uh, I saw uh, you were already putting some uh, some uh, notes in the chat uh, before this session announcing that uh, Resco has put together a, a third option. Uh, and that third option is called Resco Field Service 2.0. So for those customers who don't want to switch to Power Apps or for those customers who need something more robust than a Power App based application, Resco has the third option and that's the Resco Field Service 2.0. If you ask what it is, uh, that's the right question. Uh, it's, a, it's a solution that consists of a number of different things. One of the things is technology. The second one is concepts and the third one is commitment. So if we look at the technology, uh, it's pretty straightforward there. Uh, RESCO uh, Field Service 2.0 is based on the robust uh, market proven platform. That pla that's the platform that actually Microsoft is, uh, is using as part of the agreement for their field service uh, Xamarin based, uh, based product. So it's all the support for, for native applications, configuration tools and modules that, uh, that we put together and complement uh, the mobile scenario. However, with the uh, full RESCO solution, customers are getting more value in forms of products that can be seamlessly integrated with the platform. So on one hand, it's the RESCO inspections, a tool to create dynamic forms with a lot of components at the disposal, very, very strong offline capabilities, uh, lots of functionality in areas of rules to, to define logic and specific uh, behavior of the inspection forms. On the other side is also routes, so a functionality for the users who travel a lot uh, with the option to uh, optimize their, their uh, travel, uh, travel times and uh, their traveling routes. Uh, see where they need to go, in, uh, integration with Google Maps for navigation, a step-by-step -step process, but also added functionality for the back office teams through a location monitor to see how the users are progressing through the days. 
And on top, this is uh, the innovations. We actually have a special team at Resco uh, that don't do anything else. They're just de uh, mapping and uh, trying to identify the next big things, uh, the performance improvements, efficiency boosters, and we building them into our platform to make these available for our customers. Examples are our advancements and improvements in area of uh, wearable technology. RESCO can be run on smartwatches, wearable computers, uh, smart glasses, AR, VR headsets, full support for HoloLens 2, for example, but also in areas such as voice control, AI image recognition, or uh, AR video calls where you can connect with your back office teams in real time and get some hints uh, in a form of AR based uh, based notes that can be uh, uh, that can be uh, created and drawn on top of the screens. So all that together is field service 2.0. We believe this is kind of the best of uh, of the Resco technologies put together. The next pillar is the concepts and this very quickly not to bore you too much. Uh, we at Resco uh, started with supporting Palm Pilots and Amazon Kindle Fires and now supporting the latest iPhones and Android devices, etc. We understand that people are different, companies are different, they use different sets of devices. We work with companies who have bring your own device policy. We work with companies who provision uh, the devices for all their users. Our goal is simple. Whatever device you choose as a company, as an employee, a user, we want to make sure that the Resco application runs there and it's a native application to guarantee the best performance ever. The second concept is the continuous experience. And this is our idea of marrying context with use case and putting them uh, together. So the way this works, if you imagine a typical day of a field service technician, uh, let's, say, let's say an elevator technician, if they start in the right upper corner at, uh, at the virtual one, uh, one o'clock, the day starts in the morning with scheduling and planning the day. They usually use a phone, maybe a laptop, maybe a tablet uh, to do so, uh, familiar, familiarize themselves with uh, uh, all the appointments, the visits, uh, the service bookings, uh, etc. Once ready to go, they get into the track, van or pickup truck, uh, and they use the phone for navigation uh, to, uh, to find the fastest route to get to the final destination. If your car supports uh, Apple Car or Android Auto, Resco uh, actually fully integrates with these and you can, you can run the application uh, in your car with the navigation as well. After you arrive at the spot, usually uh, the technician needs to check for hazards to make sure that they operate in a safe environment. Lots of times we hear that they need to use both their hands to move some objects, maybe uh, even climb somewhere, etc. So using a smartwatch to check for hazards comes, uh, comes handy. And then uh, they do the regular job, the regular work, they fix something, they collect data, they, uh, uh, they run an inspection, maybe finalize it with a mobile report with a signature uh, that they, uh, they capture and provide uh, that report to the customer before they leave. And this is uh, this can be uh, all uploaded, all data updated on the device of their choice. If they need to go through a complex repair, complex process, uh, they can run the same application in their uh, smart glasses or AR, VR headsets such as uh, Microsoft HoloLens 2 uh, to, uh, to make sure that they're successful. So lots of different things there these users are doing as part of their day, uh, different processes, different workflows, but the point is we can equip them with the same technology running on many different uh, types of hardware to make sure that they don't find it too much or too obtrusive or kind of an enemy standing in their way, but more as a companion that is there when they need it. Uh, and, uh, can be used right at the spot so they save time, some time to uh, upload all of that information uh, once they're done. The third concept is the mission control, the location monitor. This gives a lot of power to the back office teams. 
Uh, this is a way where you uh, the, to track your users, see their schedules in different colors on top of the map with the option of a time shift to actually see where these users have been in uh, in the past, in the morning, for example, where they should be at certain uh, time in the future, such as in the afternoon. And what's really cool, the RESCO location monitor also supports live view. So you can turn on live view uh, and you can see where the users are in real time. One of our customers, a company called Orange Box, uh, we put together a case study. Uh, they run, they use Microsoft Dynamics uh, and they do a furniture delivery. So they needed to track, uh, to track their trucks. Uh, and they use the RESCO routes with the location monitor uh, to do so. Uh, and they were able to save quite a lot of money on hardware, extra maintenance of that hardware and installation of the hardware into their trucks as they're just using the same mobile application on the smartphones that are all equipped with the GPS units. So we're taking advantage of the devices that the users already carry on themselves anyway. The last pillar of the field service 2.0 is commitment. Uh, and again, I'll just uh, go back to history. So when we started the company, these were some of the devices that we supported. Nokia's, Palm Pilots, uh, Palm Trios, uh, uh, etc. We were supporting customers running those and we support them now on the fancy uh, new devices uh, that they use. And here's our commitment, whatever the feature, future will bring, whatever the new great device, new hardware will look like, we at Resco, we're super passionate about mobile technologies and want to make sure that we can enable the full potential of, uh, of our customers uh, to use uh, their systems on these on this new hardware as well. And the last commitment, there's one asterisk uh, associated with Resco and that's no asterisks. We want to make sure that the customers who use Resco technology, they don't have to think about three, four, seven other limitations when they can use the software, if they have to cache uh, some data before, if they have to turn to offline to make sure they can do the job, or if there are some devices that are not supported, uh, et cetera, et cetera. We are big believers in enabling the users so that they can focus on the job that's what they're good at. We're good at providing them with a technology that works as a companion so that they can do that work, do that job better, faster, and more efficiently. So with that, I think we have a little less than 20 minutes uh, to go through a demo. So let me try to do that now. And then I'll try to leave some room for questions as well. So, uh, what you see right here is a is an iPhone application, iOS application running on my iPhone. This is a real phone right here. So if I launch the Resco Mobile CRM application, this is the application that uh, I have running right here. This is the field service 2.0 as we envision it. Uh, if you're familiar with the Microsoft Field Service application, we changed the UI and the design of the application to make it a little bit easier on the eye, uh, more modern and more attractive UI is part of it. So I'm going to pretend that I'm an elevator technician today and I'm going to follow that uh, continuous experience uh, uh, day in a, in a life of elevator technician scenario. So as part of my morning, I go to the bookings, the very first item on the home menu. And here I can see that I have two bookings scheduled for today. This is the traditional Resco calendar uh, that you're probably familiar with. Uh, I can change the views at the bottom of the screen. And what's really cool, uh, I also have quick information, everything important about the booking listed right on the view. So I see the stage, it's scheduled, uh, I see the start time, and I see the name of the customer and the address underneath as well. If I want to go into the detail, I just tap on the first one, the litware fabrication. I can familiarize myself uh, with this work order. Uh, I can see some booking, some summary, etc. Everything looks good. At the very top of the screen, I have these stages. Uh, so when I'm ready to, to drive there, I can tap on the traveling stage and mark it as a current stage. 
to change my uh, my status of the booking and you can see it on the screen here where it changed to traveling. So I'm ready to go. Uh, this day looks good to actually help me get there very quickly. I go to my route. My route is a functionality that combines a map view uh, that you can see right here with a tour plan that I'll show you in a second. And it's fully integrated with the booking. So with the calendar, if I had more bookings on the calendar, I would have more stops in the my route uh, functionality of the application as well. But right now we're showing two stops. You can see the blue tags or uh, one and two numbered one and two on the map. Uh, the, the data is in the Seattle area and also here in the north east corner I have the uh, the office address and uh, if I roll out the tour plan from the bottom of the screen you'll see that that's where I start my day so if my start location is set to work and end location is set to work as well in between I have the two bookings coming from the calendar What's really cool, part of the Resco My Route, I get the information about the distance between uh, the, the two stops and also approximate estimated time needed to cover uh, that distance in between. In total, I'm going to cover almost 30 miles and it should take me a little less than 50 minutes. That blue line actually on the map shows how to get there from the work location to spot number one, then stop number two. When I'm ready to drive, all I have to do is tap on the little blue arrow or blue button in the right upper corner and I can push this whole tour plan to Google Maps. So if I do so, this will actually be calculated from my current location because that's how Google Maps works. Uh, but uh, uh, as you can see, this would be a really long trip for me as I'm based in the Boston area. But as I zoom into the Seattle area, you will see that the first stop named A, then the second stop B, and the final stop is the office uh, location are marked right here, just like shown in the application. And if I hit the start button at the bottom of the screen, I get the step-by-step -step navigation. Let me just uh, put it this way. Probably you're more familiar with this view when you drive your car and I can just start driving. Let's assume I arrived at the spot, uh, the first one. So I go back to the bookings as an example how to how to uh, uh, work with uh, with the work order. I open up the first one. Since I arrived there, I can change my status to in progress and mark it as current stage. And now I'm actually going to do my real job. So I see the summary. I know what I'm supposed to do. Uh, before I start my work, I actually need to check for those hazards. So here I'm going to try to show you the support for smartwatches. There are some inspections. These are this is Resco inspections, nicely seamlessly integrated with the Resco application. Uh, I can see some history here, some inspections that uh, have been performed in the past. Some of them have been completed. Some of them are still in progress. We also have full support for charts, so I can flip that view to give me a quick graphical interpretation of all those inspections, or I can flip it again to uh, see them itemized. So what I'll do, I tap on the plus button now, and I'm going to check for hazards. So I'll choose the very first template, the very first questionnaire that I have available in my application. So I open it up. Uh, it doesn't look very nice, but the point is that this one is actually designed for the smartwatch. So what I'll do, I'll switch to smartwatch and show you how I can run this hazard checklist on an Apple Watch. On an Apple Watch. So let me switch to to my iPad. Here we go. I'll try to make it uh, nice and crisp and focused. And uh, what I'll do on the watch, so do you know, I'll turn on the watch, go to the Resco application on my watch and just go through all the has scan questions uh, on my watch. So let's do that. Let's unlock the watch first. I'll go to the home menu now. I have the mobile CRM application right here. It's connecting. 
and just in a second it will uh, load the has checklist uh, questionnaire there we go first i need to confirm the date okay question have i encountered any hazards i answer yes and now we're gonna define those hazards risk of slip maybe medium a strain or overexertion, medium any moving objects yeah i'm in an elevator shaft lots of uh, moving uh, elevators here contact with harmful energy sources absolutely that's a high risk harmful objects and substances uh that's uh, maybe low have you completed the has scan yes i did and i get the last message that i can now continue on my handheld device so all done without using my fingers uh, too much or holding a phone on my uh, in my hand I can finalize and finish this has scan with a with a smartwatch. What's even cooler on the devices such as Android Watch, we have now support for voice control. So instead of choosing the right answer and uh, checking the the questions with my eyes on uh, Android watches, we have support for voice control. Quick. Uh, check of the has scan checklist on the on the mobile device so i can just confirm maybe uh change some of the answers if i need to but if i'm done i just tap the plus button uh, the save button in the right upper corner so i checked for the hazards all good and now i go through a regular inspection so i choose the template regular inspection the fourth from the top or third from the bottom and what I'll do here, I actually ins will inspect the whole elevator. This is nicely integrated and tightly uh, uh, aligned with the work order. So these are the data, the records that are coming from, from uh, the other entities in my application. And uh, the way I'll work, I'll first define the elevator I'm going to be inspecting uh, by serial number. I provide a manufacturer, a model, etc. And then I'll cover these different sections, different areas in the elevator. So either I can type in the serial number or I can scan a barcode. So I'll do that. I'll tap on that little QR code button next to the serial number. And I have a little barcode here. So let's see if that works. Yep, yeah, uh, it uh, captured the serial number. And based on that, we identify the manufacturer and model as well. And I also get some information about the last inspection that is encoded in that barcode. The general state of the elevator is working with some issues. Those were reported to me. Uh, so let's uh, try to identify some of those issues. First, I'll focus on the cabin interior. I inspect the lights, control panel, LCD display. Maybe some uh, are not working properly, so we can highlight them in different color but overall pretty good. Then I'll focus on the cabin exterior. I first check for uh, check the left brake. That one's working nicely, but the right brake seems to be damaged. And that's kind of a very essential part of the elevator. So let me go right into the spare parts, my inventory, uh, to see if, uh, if I can actually change this damaged brake part and fix it right on the spot. This is getting a little bit messy. There's too many things here, so I'm not able to find the right spare part. So I'll use the AI image recognition that we built into the application as well. To do so, I'll tap on the black uh, photo uh, or camera. I'll take a picture of the faulty right brake spare part. And I hit use photo to submit this picture and see if we can identify what kind of spare part it is. If I go to the spare parts now, you can see the inventory has been uh, knocked down to just one uh, spare part. It's the brake pad type, type 24 WM. So I know what I need to fix uh, and I'll be able to uh, fix that right brake and now I can mark it as okay. Moving on, I'll check the wire ropes the securing brackets, everything uh, actually looks good. So let me move to the next section, the cabin issues. If I spot something that uh, needs to be recorded, there are some big issues. 
uh, defects, etc. I can take a picture of that. Uh, so let me do that. I choose capture picture. Uh, here's a an elevator shaft I'm looking at, and apparently it has uh, it's not in a good state. So I use a uh, hit use photo, and before I store this, there we go. I actually can add some visual clues for my colleagues when they come uh, to fix these issues. To do so, I tap on the little plus button in the right bottom corner. I have these two little red tags that show up and using my finger, the best stylus we have, we've been born with, I drag this tag and place it on a specific location or position on the picture. And when I tap on that little red tag, I can now define some more details and this is completely configurable. So I'll say this first tag is regarding a control panel and it's a critical priority. And maybe one more example, I, ta I tap, uh, tap on the little plus button, grab that cabin issue, place it over here. I tap on the red tag and I'll define this as uh, regarding wire ropes and maybe it's a high priority. When I'm done, uh, I tap on the little check mark in the right upper corner, and that photo is now stored as part of the uh, as part of the questionnaire. I'll just go through the engine room very quickly. Uh, check the engine, the central unit, the wiring. Ideally, in an ideal world, I would uh, check every floor to make sure the doors, the push buttons, and displays are working properly. And if I need to repeat that step, um, I have the little plus button so I can repeat it as many times as many floors there are in the building. Maybe I'll provide some final notes. And when done, I tap on the customer signature and sign uh, the questionnaire to store the signature as part of it. So if I look through it, everything actually looks very nice. I think uh, this was a successful inspection. I tap on the three little dots now, and before I leave uh, the building, I want to send a report to the customer so that they have it as part of their uh, their files before I leave the, the premises. So I choose the option to complete the questionnaire with the report. I'm aware that I won't be able to make any additional changes. and. Uh, here we go, that took literally just a couple seconds. This is the PDF example of the report. So all the, all the answers, all the fields are nicely listed here. Uh, and this report also shows the pictures and the signature at the bottom of the screen. This is a RESCO report, so it also works when completely disconnected or when you don't have uh, uh, connectivity. And if I tap on the three little dots again, what I can do, I can print it, email it, copy it, open it, or just save it as part of the as part of the record. So just like that, I was able to inspect the elevator using my phone. I was able to go through the whole process. Uh, the the inspection questionnaire was designed in a number of groups that logically walked and navigated me through the whole uh, uh, inspection process with some uh, some cool added value functionalities such as uh, scanning barcodes, AI image recognition, taking signatures, uh, marking uh, pictures with additional uh, information and context. And at the end, I was also able to build a report right in the mobile application. So I'll do one more thing. Uh, I mark this work order as completed because I'm finished here. I save it. Here in the bookings, you can see the green light. It's completed and I can move on to the next one, the Contoso Electronics. So I would open up this one and before I'm ready to drive, uh, I can see the details what to do so I can mark myself. Uh, I'm in the traveling stage and uh, hitting the Google Maps. Uh, I can again drive my car to the next destination. So that concludes the demo. Uh, and with that, I think I'm almost right on time. Uh, so if you have some questions, please feel free to share them or, or I'm not sure if people can unmute themselves. I'd be happy to hear your ideas, your feedback, your thoughts, uh, or just uh, some general questions as well. 
Uh, Ivan, this is Reza. If I can uh, speak and ask the question, is that possible? Sure, I can hear you. Perfect. Um, so, um, Ivan, I heard you a while ago saying uh, when you guys did an analysis uh, at Resco, you noticed that 80% of the customers have used 50% of their custom entities, which talks to like the reality that exists in the field today. People have a lot of uh, Resco, custom Resco mobile solutions, and it's not clear uh, what the plan is um, on the Microsoft side to support these people after the Resco solution gets sunset. Um, my question from you is, at what at one point are you going to be able to share some guidance uh, on how Resco is going to support those customers? Because these are enterprise customers who already have Resco with Forge solution and they've done a lot of customization. So what's the story of them moving from the previous Woodford based solution to the Resco 2.0 solution. That's that's one point. If you don't have that answer today, that's fine. I just want to know if you guys have a plan to support those customers um, and then um, specifically those customers that have a ton of customization. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Reza. This is a this is a great question. I think it, it you cut right into a very frequent feedback I'm receiving from a lot of customers, companies who who really have heavily customized Dynamics field service, heavily customized work order, lots of custom functionality, and they build that same on top of the Resco based client. And in some cases, it's year of investments, right? And a very highly customized uh, functionality. And, a, and as a result, a highly customized mobile application as well. So we are receiving this uh, this feedback quite frequently. I don't have a great answer right now, nothing official, but what I can tell you, we're trying to find ways to make sure that these customers can capitalize and leverage on all of that investment that they've already done. And it's not only investment on the on the in the R and D or development uh, side of the business. It's also investment into the human resources, right? The users are already familiar with the application. They probably use it on a daily basis. And end of the day, it works. So they're not very willing to change things, especially when they work. So hopefully I'll have more news in the coming weeks or months uh, to share some, some best practices, uh, how to leverage all that investment and use it as part of Resco, rather than trying to look for some other options and trying to uh, reinvent the wheel. I think I think my computer got a virus or something. <laughs> yeah. It's called Ben Volmer. <laughs> Hi, Ivan. How are you? <laughs> I have to say, Ben, I had a really great day, and then I turned on the Teams again, and I saw you. <laughs> and my day just turned to be a great day. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Well, you know, the good news is Will's actually going to be speaking. He's just doing it from my office. So, <laughs> so you'll actually have a smart guy doing all the talking. Oh, so really? <laughs> It's up into social distancing, Ben. I think it doesn't apply for one household, right? So there's exactly. like... <laughs> nice. All right, guys, do we have any other questions for Ivan? If not, make sure you guys actually submit the survey. I'm actually going to drop the link in there real quick. Um, Remember, for each time you submit a survey, it's going to be counted as one entry to win that $50 gift card. And again, we're also giving away two Amazon gift cards for the folks with the most social media posts who is using who are using the hashtag D365 Wave 2 Saturday. Ivan, thank you so much for everything, for sponsoring us, for your great session just now. Uh, Riza, did you have another question? I saw hands come up. Oh no, sorry, I just forgot to. No worries. Raise that. Sorry about that. Derek is saying hi to Ivan. 
<laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks for everything you're doing. This is great to have so many people here on Saturday. Absolutely. And then Ben Volmer, unfortunately, too. But <laughs> what can we do, right? It's the Ben Volmer virus. <laughs> All right, guys, make sure that you're present for that last session for at 5.30 p.m. Eastern for prizes and wrap up. You have to be present. And again, make sure that you actually submit that survey as well. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks, Ivan. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.